All right, in this video, we will um, evaluate some log expressions such as these. First of all, the basics. A log is an exponent. It's the exponent that turns the first number into the second number, the base into this other number. So what power changes a 5 into a 25? 2. So that's why this equals 2 because 5 to the second power equals 25. Um, let's see, let's do that again. What if I had log base 3 of, you know what, let me do a different one. So what if I had log base 2 of 8? There is a power that turns a 2 into an 8. What is it? 3. So the log base 2 of 8 is 3 because 2 to the third power is 8. So as the log is the exponent that changes the base into this other number. All right? So that's um, the first level. Now, on the other hand, imagine that you have something that's going from a bigger number to a smaller number. So say if I have log base 9 of 3. So this is asking for the exponent that turns a 9 into a 3. Well, um, here's the thing. You have to understand that what's, what's really happening, the way you turn a 9 into a 3 is by doing the square root. The square root of 9 is 3. So how do I look at this as an exponent? Well, square root is the same thing as 9 to the 1 half power. So 1 half is the exponent that changes a 9 into a 3 because 1 half really means the square root. Um, so that's why the answer to this would be one half. Okay, let's do one more example like that. Say if I have a log um, base 27 of 3. Again, I have a big number becoming a smaller number. That means it must be some type of a root. Um, now, if you understand that it's the cube root of 27 that equals 3, then you'll understand that 27 to the 1 3rd power equals 3 because 1 3rd power means cube root. So this is asking what power changes a 27 into a 3? Well, it is 1 3rd. The 1 3rd power is the cube root, which would do that. So that's why this would be 1 3rd. Okay, so that's the background information that you need to be able to do these problems. Now, there's a few other levels to it. Um, but the rest I can explain to you as I go. Um, so, for example, number one. Um, you know what? Okay, so here's one, one additional thing. When there's no base that is showing, so, uh, for example, if I just set, say log of 100, what's that? Um, understand that there's an invisible base. Uh, when there's no base shown, it's understood to be 10. So the answer to this would be 2, because 10 squared is equal to 100. So 2 is the exponent that changes 10 into 100. Um, so that's what's happening here. We have no visible exponent. That means, uh, sorry, there's no visible base. That means it is a 10. OK, it must be base 10. Now. Um, let's deal with the fact that there's a 1 up here, all right? It's 1 over 10,000. Um, the way I recommend you deal with that is by disregarding the 1. Pretend for a moment that it wasn't a fraction at all. All right, pretend that this was the problem. Log base 10 of 10,000. Okay, uh, let me just rewrite it for just one moment. All right, this isn't the problem, but it will help you understand. What would be the answer to this question without the 1 on it? Well, 10 to what power is 10,000? You can count the zeros, 1, 2, 3, 4. Um, so the answer would be 4. 10 to the 4th power gives you 10,000. So the answer would be 4, um, except for there is a 1 up here. So how does that change things? Well, it makes it actually be a negative. 
all right, because there's one over, it's actually going to be a negative four. Now let's um, check it, and uh, hopefully I can get you to understand why it works. So we're saying that negative four is the power that will change 10 into one over 10,000. So let's check it out. Let's do 10 to the negative four power and see what we get. Well, remember, a negative exponent doesn't make a negative number. It drops you down. So this would be 1 over 10 to the fourth power. And that would be 1 over 10,000, four zeros, OK, which is what we were trying to get. So negative 4 is the answer. Let's keep practicing. All right, look at problem number 2. Again, I recommend don't look at the number 1 yet. And uh, don't forget, you are allowed to use an exponent table. Let's see if I can pull up an exponent table real quick. So I'll be referring back to this. Now, without the 1 on top, I'd be asking myself, 6 to what power is 216? So looking at the exponent table, I see the 6, I see the 216, that is the third power. All right? So as it is, the answer would be 3, uh, you know, without the 1 on it. Now, there really is a 1, so that's going to make this a negative 3. Now, one more time, I could check my answer. Um, so uh, I'm saying that this is the exponent that changes 6 into 1 over 216. So let's, let's try it out. If I do 6 to the negative 3 power, that's 1 over 6 to the third power. That is 1 over 216, which is what I wanted. OK. Look at number 3. What exponent turns a 9 into an 81? Um, that's a power of 2. 9 squared equals 81, so that's easy. OK, now without the x, what power changes 3 into 81? Um, well, there's my 3, there's my 81. It's the fourth power. OK, so without the little x, it would be just the answer would be 4. OK, so the answer is going to be 4x because of the x right there. And again, we could check our answer. This is supposed to be the exponent that turns 3 into 81 to the x power. Let's try it out. If I use this exponent with this base, now, see, can you understand that this would be the same thing as 3 to the fourth power to the x power? All right, because I would just multiply these and I'd get back to here. But 3 to the fourth power is 81. So then I'd have 81 to the x power, which is what I wanted. OK. Now, here's something new. LN stands for natural law. When you see um, LN like that, like that um, Again, it's an invisible base, but this time it's not 10. This time, the understood base is the constant e. Um, just like we know that pi is approximately 3.14, uh, the constant e is approximately 2.72. And it goes on forever without repeating. It's irrational. Um, anyway, you don't really need to know that right now. Just understand that this is a number. Um, so if you see ln, it's base e. Memorize that. Right? It's the same thing as having like log base e of 7, I guess I should say. So that means this is just like having log base e of e to the fifth power. Look, when you have a log base and a base and they're the same, they basically undo each other. They cancel each other out. Um, so the answer is just going to be 5. All right, remember the understood base here, when there's none showing, is base 10. 
What exponent changes 10 into 1,000? Well, that's 3. You can just count the zeros to know that. So the answer is just 3. All right, looking over at number 7. All right, what exponent changes 4 into 4,096? I don't know that off the top of my head. So there's 4. There's 4,096. It's a sixth power. All right, so the answer is 6. Okay, and finally, number 8. Well, no, not finally. Got a few more to go. Um, but number 8. I think I did this one earlier. I have a big number becoming a smaller number. Okay? That means I must be doing the um, root. Is it the square root? No. Is it the cube root? Yes. Um, the cube root of 27 is 3. All right, so if the cube root changes 27 into a 3, cube root is the same thing as the 1 third power. All right, so 27 to the 1 third power will equal 3. All right, so this is the answer to the question. What power changes 27 into a 3? The 1 third power, because that's the same as doing the cube root. Okay. So there's that 1 again, but this time it's on the base. Guess what? It still works the same way. Um, cover up the 1 for a minute. All right, ask yourself what the answer would be without the 1. 4 to what power would be 64? All right, what power changes a 4 into a 64? I know the answer is 3, but you could look at the table. 4, 64, that's the third power. So the answer would be 3 if it wasn't for this 1. Because of the 1, it's going to be, again, negative 3. All right, want to check the answer just to make sure? Well, we are claiming that if we take this base and this power, we will get 64. Well, let's see. If you have a fraction with a negative power, remember that you do the reciprocal and make it positive. So the reciprocal of 1 fourth is just 4. So that would be 4 to the third power, which is 64, which is what we wanted. All right, so the answer is 3. All right, can I squeeze in one more problem? Okay, this one's extra tricky. Um, 343 is obviously not on the exponent table as um, a final answer. But let's see if we can find both of these numbers. Number 10 is going to take a different approach than the others. Um, now, let's solve this as an equation. We are trying to find the exponent that will change 343 into 16,807. In other words, 343 to what power will equal 16,000? 807. We're trying to find that exponent. Now, 343 is on my exponent table somewhere. Here it is. It's 7 to the third power. All right, so I can rewrite this as 7 to the third power. The x is still there. Now, how about 16,807? Let's see, there it is. That's going to be 7 to the 5th power. So I can write this one as 7 to the 5th power. Now we can use some logic. Um, if the bases are equal, then the exponents must be equal. So 3x must equal 5. And then uh, getting x by itself, dividing both sides by 3, Skirt. That gives me x is equal to 5 over 3. And that will be the answer to the question. Wait, what's that you say? You'd like to check your answer and see how it works? Sure, let's do that. Um, so we are claiming that this is the exponent that changes 343 to 16,807. So let's do 343 to the 5 thirds power and see what we get. Remember, 
a fractional exponent is a power over root. So that means uh, 3 is the root. So we have the cube root of 343. And then 5 is the power. So that will be the fifth power. Now the cube root of 343. Cube root of 343 is 7. So that means we have 7 to the fifth power. And then let's see what 7 to the fifth power is. Well, 7 to the fifth power is 16,807. Whoops. Which is exactly what we wanted. All right, so that's how you could check your answer.